I have never smelt the inside of a rich person's car before. It smelled great. It smelled like what I assume Idris Elba smells like. It was amazing. Idris <laughs> Elba would like a naked Idris Elba would smell like a new car. I feel like <laughs> it would just smell like. I wish I was a cologne. Like you just come yeah. by every morning and just touch it's, my shirt. Yeah. I just smell so good yeah, for the like, day. Wow, Idris Elba smells like <laughs> leather. Idris. Yeah, Idris. <laughs> Eau de Idris. Yeah. Uh, it's a parfumed Idris. Not even a thing. It's just his name. That's it. And the, the bottle looks exactly like him. Yeah. yeah. First off, uh, you scared me a bit when I asked you if you want, like, hey, are you excited about the podcast? Because he was like, what podcast? <laughs> and I was like. Literally, literally. I, I, because I, I know we had some scheduling issues yeah. and I, I, I just, I, I wrote what podcast and immediately already I wrote, ha ha ha, just kidding, smiley face. Because I knew, <laughs> I, and I didn't even wait for it. As soon as yeah. I saw the bubbles pop up, I was like, ah, no, I'm just going to no. send it. I, I knew, I'm like, he's not so dumb he can't scroll up one line. <laughs> it was, we talked about this last time we spoke. <laughs> so, but I'm here. Yeah, yeah no, you're man. here. I, I'm excited. Hard to, hard to track you down. We've yeah. been trying, we're trying, we're trying Listen, to get like, uh, uh, you know, we, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 please. No, please. I was just saying, we were at the comedy brawl and we we're just sitting over there and we're like, that guy say it. Yeah, we need that guy. See, this is the thing. I uh, I had heard about you, but I hadn't seen you do stand up yet. That's interesting. Wait, what do you mean you heard about me? So you did a. Uh, there was an amateur night that Selma did, Selma Hindi, and my brother was at that show. And apparently, the crowd oh she brought God, out wasn't bro. laughing. So uh, the oh, MC was like, "Hey, I so called funny. up one of my friends, John Mostyn, a very good storyteller, great dude." Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, this is uh, just. Oh my god, I cannot believe. <laughs> and then uh, my brother was like, "This guy is Haram Hisham, and he's really funny." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, seen this guy. He's coming up. It's Haram Hisham." <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh my god. And the comedy brawl set did not disappoint. I was hey, a laugh. Uh, you know what? That I, was a good time. I, it was a great night. It was a great show. I got a great tape. Uh, I have never felt that good about a show in a very, nice. very long time. Oh, Oh, damn, that's uh, good. I actually remember, yeah, I remember that because John Mawson was like, listen, Hisham, like 90% of my audience are like Muslims with hijabs. I yeah. need you here. <laughs> I was like, it's my time to shine. Like, yeah, we were waited, all the way there. I waited so long. Yo, I spent money. I'm like, this is Sadaqah. This is, this is yeah. going to charity. I'm going to go here. I did, I did my my set. I had I have not had that much fun in forever, yo. No, yo. nice. It was a good set. Uh, yo, I wish people, I met your brother. People nice. uh, got to know you through that. Like, I was telling my sister-in-law this morning. She's like, that guy is hilarious. So I'm like, <laughs> sick. We get in the car. Like, I'm going to go pick him up. We get in the car and immediately it's just like he's already caught up on like us. Yeah. He's like, I'm so excited. I got jokes about specific podcasts. I'm like, we don't have to do that. Because <laughs> I told him, I have call, uh, callbacks to episodes. He's like, a right. TV? I'm like, no, no, your actual podcast yeah. episode. I, I thought we were going to talk about TV shows. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> he's like, no, no your episodes. And I'm it was, like, damn, son. It's rough because like, I, I, I have an intimate relationship with you guys because I've listened to you a bunch, but like none of you, you guys met me once at Comedy yeah. Brawl like four months mm, ago. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, he sham, tone it down. They're still technically strangers. <laughs> Don't touch them. I mean, just I, be nice. Just <laughs> just be nice. He did touch me a lot on a the lot. way here. I'm we talking, laughing, like, ah, and he shake me. Oh, I'm, yeah. like, yeah, I'm driving here. I don't, I don't know this guy well too well. Uh, come down, Hisham. Come down. That's one thing I can't do. Like a lot of uh, older brown uncles, when they'll talk to you, yeah, especially if like if you meet them at the mosque or something like this. And then uh, they'll lean, they'll, they'll put the hand on your thigh. Mm. And then they would like, they lean they into leave, you. They leave it there too. And it's like, so how's work? I'm like, hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I need that hand off. I can feel the heat in my thigh. Like it's starting to warm up the bone. Uh, I can't, I don't, I don't like that at all. And the thing is, is that like, that is their go-to move. For it's, them to for them yeah. to like build a connection, mm -hmm. literally need to connect with you. Yes. Like they need to touch you. And and that's how I am. If uh, if at any point I'm having a great time with you, I, I need that physical touch. Yeah. Because I'm like we're connected, kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. But also like, a are you feeling what I'm feeling? Right? And most people are like, no, get off me. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, personal boundaries, personal boundaries. <laughs> uh, but I love it. I, I love the intimacy. Like and, and especially with comedy because yeah. that that's my goal. If yeah. I can make somebody grab onto the person next to them, I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I nailed it. I yeah. love it when you You're see one guy cry. You can have a horror. If you get like two people to cry, you're like, I feel amazing. <laughs> I just need like a hundred of those two. That's if a, you if you want Say to grab on people, what? Uh, all you need to do, <laughs> like, don't start sentences that. You get to the start and the ending of that sentence Please before continue. anybody interrupts. All you need to do is bomb in absolutely horrible. Oh, I start fashion. laughing when I see people bombing. I get so uncomfortable that it like he makes needs me to, move around. He like, like grabs, oh. he grabs onto. Oh. Some, so bad. Listen, there are some shows where you're going to be molesting people at this point. There are, it's just an hour and a half of straight silence. Yeah, I believe. And Psy just group shaking yeah. people. Psy, <laughs> si, by the way. Psy and Yaz. Oh, he's going to call you Yaz. Yeah. Hey, it is what it is. Right, cool it is what it is. For me, we've been friends for four months. I've already yeah. have nicknames for you guys. We can we call you uh, Sham. 
I uh, that's a terrible nickname. Okay, uh, a, I'm not gonna call you high. for a lie. That's Hish. the worst. Uh, Heesh. I get Heesh a lot. Are I get H. Heesh? Um, uh, for a H while. Is- it's just heroin. That's it. I, yeah. listen, uh, I'm addictive and I make it feel good. You know, right. uh, my favorite, because uh, uh, my name is not unpronounceable. Like it's he and sham. It's the male yeah. pronoun and a synonym for a lie. Mm-hmm. I've gotten so many nicknames. My favorite by far, I used to work at uh, Winners in, in Ottawa. Uh, if you ever want to see the scum of the earth, uh, <laughs> do a nine to five shift on a Thursday at a Winners. Uh, my manager, who could not pronounce my name, used to call me Shazam. Uh-huh. That is. So it'd be like, Shazam to cash, please. And people wow. would stop and be like, so is there excited. a hero? And, I, no. and then you show up? Just a chubby black dude with an afro and glasses being like, who needs a cart pulled? <laughs> That's all right, man. We all did those. I worked at uh, Walmart. Nice. Yeah, my first job was Baskin Robbins, and then when I came to Canada, I was doing the the night shift at Walmart, which is from Yo. eleven at night to seven in the morning. Yo. And if you want to see people uh, who like talk to the produce and stuff, Yo. that's the time they come out. Wow. That's when they like really. Yeah, I uh, yeah we had a lady that used to talk to like cans of like Chef Boy RD. Like if she dropped something, she'd mad at the cans. Like get back here! I thought I told you. And then uh, wow, that is scary. Yeah, but just like get back here do? is okay. I thought I told the you. Can is what just did you tell her? Underneath the aisle, <laughs> Yo. trying to escape. My Yo, Walmart was that was an interesting place. That's a place where you can get a lot of material now. If Yo. I look back at it, my my first job was uh, questionable labor at a mosque. <laughs> How questionable, brother? <laughs> How questionable? <laughs> so I, can, I need to know. So in high school, <clears throat> in our curriculum, what we had was um, volunteer. Exactly. Yeah, so you had to volunteer for I think what was it forty hours? Yeah, I remember something that. like that. Right. And uh, I looked through. Did not make me a better person, by the way. No, it didn't. Um, I I looked through the list of like acceptable places where you can volunteer, Mm -hmm. trying to figure out what's like the most comfortable thing I can do. And one of them was child minding. That's how it was. That was how it was written. Child Child minding. That is hilarious. Dash or no dash between those words? I don't remember. Child it's not that sharp. It's high school. That is the weirdest way of saying babysitting. Yes. Is that what it meant? That's yeah, how an uncle or like somebody who doesn't have the, so the most, you know, best mind grip your child. on the English language <laughs> is going to say like, yeah, so will somebody mind this child? You keep the child on your mind. You know, that's yeah. how it works. So I went to, I, uh, I used to go to Islamic school and uh, that the sister who ran it also had, a, uh, like her husband ran a mosque. Mm. So I would, I went to the mosque and I figured during summer school, I would just take oh. care of the children. <clears throat> uh, when we got there, uh, it was me and my friend, we, we, we went there together. Uh, she's like, we already got this kid thing. It's all good, <laughs> right? But what I need you to do is sand these windows and paint them. So we start to get to sanding. We're like, we didn't have a sander, so we had to go buy one. So we did that. Then she's like, now I need you to build the uh, the playground. So we just outside in in the in the dead heat of uh, of summer, yeah, doing that. And then she's like, cut the grass, and then eventually it just became. How, how old were you? Uh, I was high school, so it was like grade nine. You Great basically ten? went you to were, work in a, you know, like a second to third world country where yeah. they're like, he's going to come every day. We're going to have him do that's stuff. That's illegal yeah. child labor. Yeah, like, so, <laughs> this is exactly. going to give a 14 year old a sander? Like, yeah. he hasn't even taken design and tech yet. This guy yeah. has no idea what's happening. Yeah. He's going to mind kids. And now this is happening. So, back then, this particular mosque, Farouk, um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Farouk Masjid, uh, was still a log cabin. It hadn't mm. become the mosque that we know of. So, it was a legit log cabin. Whoa. And You're blowing my mind. It right didn't now. have a basement. It had a crawl space. Oh, my God. So the basement was about, like, yay high. That was the ceiling. And uh, that year, they wanted to install central air conditioning in the place. Oh, yes. It was a log cabin that didn't have, like, AC. It's a little sweat lodge. Wow. So, <laughs> basically. And uh, we, he, she said, listen, the, the guy's coming in to install it, mm-hmm. but we need to clean the, the basement, which you- is a crawl space. Jeez. Right, this story is not and the so thing where I think we it's open. You in there? So we open. Yeah, we. I mean, like that was part. Like at this point, see, this is what happened. This is weird, right? Because there's no long. There's no point during this. I felt like we got groomed because, like, I, <laughs> because she, she didn't. She didn't start. <laughs> she didn't start with, you know, go into the crawl space, go clean that. Right? She she started something. Well, actually, she started pretty aggressive. It was like sanding the sea, the thing. How but it was many, a painting and whatnot. How many days do you have to do with this? No, but here's the deal, right? Yeah. We thought, well, it would be, it would be, it would be not, it wouldn't be a good thing. It would be disrespectful if we just did forty hours in and out of of taking care of kids. So we're like, we'll you just be here for all of summer. Overachieving wow. dorks, right? right? No, 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 because like now, how do you tell Sister Khadija for people who know? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Right? Is that the lady that throws like abayas on people? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, this lady, if if like a, a girl is praying in the sister section and, and she's this wearing lady, pants? This lady doesn't think she's dressed appropriately, while the girl is praying, we'll start dressing her. Yo, we'll throw an abaya. Yo, right? And she's famous. <laughs> she's famous in, in Mississauga, bro. I know you're a Toronto guy. She's famous in Mississauga. Majula Farouk. Yeah. Watch out, sister. Yeah. <laughs> she's out straight there. Up. Straight up. Straight up. She will dress you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing Mid-prayer. this for Allah and just yeah. like, swarms you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's real. She'd be like with a net so she could just like one. <laughs> yeah. Just one, one my, sweep. What Lena? What? Uh, <laughs> she was on the podcast too, and she was praying there. Yeah. And the sister didn't think she was praying where she should, so she just while she's praying, just grabbed her and then moved her to another part of the masjid. Uh-huh. Just like you're in this line now, <laughs> while she's praying. No. Anyways, you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, we started there, and then you know playground, then cutting the grass and things like that, and yeah. then eventually we we graduated to uh, go into <laughs> the, the go into the crawl space. Oh, so the the way to get to this crawl space is literally um, there was like a hook, uh, like a like an O ring, and you grab onto that and you open it. Okay, right? It's and a then, dungeon. Uh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the beginning of every yeah. every horror movie, <laughs> right? And then there's stairs, and there's like one light with like a is you know this how it started. <laughs> And my Just friend, do, uh, my friend tips. was like, I'm not going down of there. Of course not. <clears throat> right. Now, once when he says that he's not doing it, I'm like, well, I guess I'm doing it because, because I'm better than you. <laughs> oh my Ooh. God. Wow. It's a, it's, that's the wrong time to like prove you're better than somebody. <laughs> uh, definitely. When a basement is involved, you are, you are so better down there. going Be a into coward holes. and leave. So I go yeah. down there, a uh, lot of spiders. And um, a lot of logs that they didn't use to build the stuff, like oh. the actual log cabin. There was logs down underneath. It is like literally uncut. a dungeon. Oh, my yeah. God. Um, and then uh, it was like sawdust. And that was it. It wasn't that and much in there. And last year's volunteer who didn't yeah. know how to say it, when to stop. <laughs> just, just clinging a skeleton yeah. up the stairs. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I remember we, we, we brought the shop back downstairs, the vacuum, so and it was just fun. I just vacuumed the whole thing. It was It was nice and clean by the mm. time I was done finished but like literally like curved over for like three hours cleaning the cleaning the dungeon there Jeez. yeah so basically oh, so this is the way how this went down after we were done summer like tired at this, at this point we've done a, a variety of things that i never thought we would do uh for example uh we apart from that we also we also uh, uh took apart a shed like she had with to like a destroyed. hammer and once again yeah. you guys are children i right. want to yeah. emphasize your children yeah. at this part yeah like someone came in, destroyed it, and then we like took the debris and threw it into a bin. W- was mm. there any ever an adult watching you guys? No, 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 no. Get no. Out. Just like, well, I mean, after the AC was in, they never came outside. Jeez, and you just kept getting <laughs> at it, dude. Right? I find it uh, awesome that you can tell her that, like, hey, I want, I, we're done. No, because because here's the thing, mm-hmm. I know this lady for a long time, mm. so like, so it's like, you know, you don't want her to tell your parents, mm, hey, no. look, you know, he's not doing well he's or whatnot. He's not going into the holes I want him to, like, or this, something. this guy's not right? listening. So we're just, like, dedicated for life. We just said yes wow. and kept on doing it. When we were done, she gave me $200 cash. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Uh, and I remember I, I went and purchased a fossil watch out of that, with that money. And that was uh, that was the that was the end of that. That That's was the awesome. end of that. Yeah. Fossil watch, I yeah. can relate. Yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. Good there brand, you go. Good I still brand. have I still have it in a tin upstairs. Yo, yeah, respect. Yeah, that was uh, that cool. was my time. That was my first job. That was After that, cool. I went to Loblaws. I did it for one week, and I was like, for some reason, the Loblaws work. I was like, this is some bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> this is stupid. They call this work. Where's the hammer? I hate this. Two, one thing I hated absolutely hated was something called facing. Is that what they call it? Facing. Yes, zoning is what I called it. So you have to just turn every single thing that the label is pointing yeah. the right way, and you got to pull, pull everything stuff forward. forward. Yeah, zoning yeah. is a B. But they didn't. They don't give the new guy the regular stuff. It's like no. the whole fragile. Yeah, man. I was so you got to pull in the whole fridge. Yeah, your hands, are, hands freezing. are freezing. Yeah, <laughs> it hurts. I did that for that a week. Hurts. I was like, that's it. I remember my paycheck was one two three dot one six. One two three dot one. I know it was traumatizing because you still remember the number. Yeah, that's oh my God. interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's been Weirdly. several decades and several presidents <laughs> my, uh, later. <laughs> my first job uh, was Baskin Robbins, and it was uh, because you're competing with. It's in Texas, right? So you're always competing with Mexicans because, like, they'll <laughs> work for nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, so true, true. My job true. was under the table, yeah. even though I could work there. But you I was were paid like, under the table. You were under the table. No, I yeah, literally, I was just no, I was uh, paid under. <laughs> the Handing table. out ice cream cones to the guy, <laughs> right? So, but at the end of every day, she would open the register and she would give me like 20 or 25 bucks because I'd work four hours for 20 or yeah. five hours for 25 bucks. Right. That was my first job. And ult- uh, unlimited uh, ice cream? Oh, uh, yeah. When she wasn't looking. Because her, her sons were there and they were like, dude, you could eat, you can eat ice cream. Yeah. But they would only give me the sampler spoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you couldn't really <laughs> so just, get a lot. Yeah, you know? but you're like just <laughs> leaning yeah. in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they knew they knew what was they were doing. Yeah. Oh, I, I think they were like, oh, let's hire a skinny guy. He's not gonna eat that much, but I can put down some ice cream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I hope on that last day you just walked out with a bear. I took a smoothie. I took the largest smoothie, and I was just like, <laughs> let's do this. Also, pretty impressive. The do be people still doing that? It's still doing do. it. I'm I thought a, I was. I'm an old millennial. I, I'm, I'm keeping that until I die. All right. I'm yeah. gonna, when I'm 90, I've got arthritis. This is the last thing I'll <laughs> yeah. do. This is elder millennial. Uh, my, yeah, my, my first and only job was winners. Uh, I did it for five years in Ooh. Ottawa. Five years but though. That's it was. It was that's my a career. It was my Vietnam. Yes. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was straight up my Vietnam. Like I, I've seen the most Super insane good at things. This. Jeez. Uh, I like, and this is the thing. Like uh, uh, working in a uh, food related. Uh, it's got to suck. Like, I, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine people trying to return food items. Like, mm-hmm. I ate half this banana. It tastes like shit. Give me my money. Guy tried to re- return a hammer. It was just the stick. He, he lost the top part. He was trying to return it. But I, it still had the scanner code, so I did it. I was like, yo, rules are rules. <laughs> yo, and you know what? I, I feel like you got to reread point, those rules. Yeah, bro. it's not even a hammer anymore. But I was like, I don't want to talk to this guy. Yeah, yeah. That's, Asian. that's exactly yeah. like half the time I'd be like, you know, fire and fury. Other time I was like, you know what? Just I remember a lady bought a three pack of underwear mm-hmm. for kids. She can't, you can't return underwear. Once it's sold, it's, it's final right. sales. So she came back. She's like, my son just wanted the one. I want to return the other two. Oh my and I'm God. like, you, you know I can't. She's like, I'm going to speak to your manager. I'm like, this will never work. My manager came back. He's like, yeah, just p- return two thirds of the cost. I was like, what? This, what? You can't just make rules that's now. That's worse. Like, when you say no and then someone else says yes, that's Yo, worse. They got to back you. Yeah, never, never. It was it was retail. It's, yeah. you know, game is the game. I respect people that will show up with those kind of balls sometimes. 100%. Return something. I was like, I've become those people. I'm like, yeah. if they can exist, I can do that now. Right. No, <laughs> if no one's sure. saying no, no. Ride Man, that wave, dude. Guys. I'm just, re- I'm returning something that's still in the, in the, in the, in the packaging. And when I and go into return, it's like shame. It's like, listen, I, I made a bag. Oh, like, and they gotta call someone off the floor to yeah. come and check. I'm like, yeah. it's still sealed with the receipt. Mm. Underwear is mm. a dirty thing to return. I wouldn't even. I'd, yeah. I'd have a conversation with the lady. Like, yeah. hey. Once again, I, I was 17. I did not want to have the conversation with the lady. Yeah, five years is a long time. Listen, so and, and was it because person? you did winners and you're like, I need to do something else and I'm gonna start doing stand up or like? Oh no no, I uh, I was like a back in Ottawa. I did a lot of video stuff. I was like a more of a YouTube dude. Okay. Uh, I I fell in love with like Saturday Night Live and all, all so I wanted to do like video sketches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I did stand up a couple times in Ottawa. And yo, I have never been more afraid in my life, <laughs> other. Then in Mecca, doing Omana, staring at the Kaaba. I was like, that's the only other time I was scared, scared. Sure. But like, just <laughs> what are you? What are you scared of? It, it like you have to understand. I, I was I was twenty. Uh, I'm in a room of, like in, at Yuck Yucks. Uh, every comedian. He has meant me- Kaaba. <laughs> oh, the Kaaba. Oh. I was like, Yucks. <laughs> It's all about Subhanahu Wa Taala. Who do we not want to be scared of? I was like, where do I interrupt? That's so let this so guy know that he's going, but not where. But you know, it's okay. I, I love it. Hey, uh, thank you for the save. Uh, uh, yo, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm surrounded by like a hundred thousand Muslims chanting. This is the most. Yeah. It's, okay. It's okay. Just, that's uh, you know, okay, that, fair, that fair, was fair. It was fair. very o- not almost say overwhelming, but very like humbling. Okay. It can be uh, overwhelming. Uh, I mean, because I was there, I had a completely different feeling. But like, we're getting. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll jump back. Yeah. Yeah. Go. 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 But in terms of stand up it was the first time I'd ever done it like being in a room full of people all staring at you the expectation it's a amateur night yeah. they're drunk and they're rowdy it's it's Ottawa on like a Thursday these people have nothing to do it's nothing in the city it, it, except for this and if it sucks they're gonna go home and hit something or someone right so I was like okay Hisham you gotta make these people laugh you know give them give them some gentleness and Bring it me was in. okay it was three and a half minutes of the most painful uh, like substandard uh, comedy in the world. I was hoping you'd say the opposite. You're oh, like, it was no. three and a half minutes of fire. Oh, I was just fire. And I'm it, like, I'm going to keep way. doing I did not do stand up for seven more years. Like I, Whoa, I did it once. Wow. I got shook. My friends were like, that was so brave. I'm like, that's Jeez. not what you want to hear after you're set. <laughs> that's brave. so brave. No, no, no. You're <laughs> brave right now that you're talking to me. Oh, oh. <laughs> but like it, it, it was so human. I remember the exact jokes I did and they were so so bad like i cannot oh, begin my dream is to one day if i ever like do conan or whatever mm-hmm. it just immediately after because i have it taped i'm like i'm like 280 pounds fat face huge afro in a wow. green blazer and i'm telling the worst jokes you have ever heard in your life and i just want that immediately after like i do conan i'm like this is what i actually was like there's like oh, a comparison man. yo i didn't do it for seven years I just did a lot of writing and, and uh, directing because, like, I got to do my content. I got to do my funny, but no one ever had to see my face, which right, was right. great. And then I came to Toronto, and yo, the only thing you could do here is stand up. Yeah, it's true. 
as soon as I was like, oh, I think I want to do stand up, I Googled and I'm like, how do you stop doing it? It's like 14 shows a night. I, I tried to do Second City when I got here and yeah. I could maybe do a sketch show like once a month. Right. But I, you could do comedy four or five nights a week yeah. every single night. Mm-hmm. So I started doing stand up and like, you know, I. <laughs> so there are shows that don't even exist anymore when I mm-hmm. moved to Toronto. Uh, there used to be uh, uh, in, in the in Church and Wesley in the, in the gay district, there used to be an amazing weed room called Village Vapor. Oh, uh, man, and, I never heard of uh, this. Oh, it Great it name. was a riot. Um, uh, they used to have a Friday late night show, and like the meanest people would show up, like the nice. uh, uh, the actual audience members, and they would heckle the shit out of the comedians. Sure. Like some people got bottles thrown at them. It was, Whoa. and this Jeez. is not a, a I weed know room. Gay people throwing bottles oh, at you. And this is like not even beer. This is like a soda bottle. You know what I mean? Like it's like wow. uh, uh, they're throwing empty bottles of Sprite at they're you. They're not even drunk and they're throwing. No, no they're stoned <laughs> and mean, and it was so funny. And on Saturdays, they would have a 420 show. It was the only comedy show on mm. the weekends in the afternoon. And I was working a desk job. So I didn't have a lot of time to do, go out at night. I had a girlfriend. I was I just moved to Toronto. I was trying to like kind of learn the city. So the only times I could do it were on the weekends. And they were the exact same super mean audience on a Friday night was there on a Saturday and Sunday afternoon. But they were so much more mellow. Because mm. it's like, it's the weekend. We're having yeah, a good time. That's true. So I got to do my shitty comedy to nobody for so long that I got to like gut over like the fear and like the mediocrity. So what I ended up doing real shows, they're like, hey, you're not half bad. I'm like, thank God. Like I, <laughs> I no one had to see me during like my growing phase when I was like a mediocre right, shitty right. comedian. Oh, only the, a very small subset dude. of gay community. And, and, I remember and you then as that, that show uh, that show ended after like a year because they you know the, they told the building and then everyone disappeared. I'm like, well, I guess no one knows about it anymore. Right. Like everyone's just like And now hey. you're polished and you're oh, like, This is who I am. And no one knows the origin, just how <laughs> mediocre the origin it was. story. Oh, oh, at all. It's like the worst origin story. It started <laughs> oh, at winners. <laughs> and worked my way up to still winners guys still winners. yeah i still know well you emceed last night man that's pretty cool oh it was a great show last night i it was an insane comedy night i uh, emceed a show where was it uh, it was a comedy bar main stage okay. chris red okay, saturday night live fame uh, this guy was an absolute killer i'd watch every one of his shows uh, thursday friday and saturday and they were absolutely amazing i got to uh, host for him we had a great lineup uh we had niles again uh who was an amazing comedian and mark little also an amazing mm. comedian uh, and then I hosted a show and he's like, hey, come back, you know, we'll hang out and everything. Which is a bunch of other comics uh, shooting the shit. And we had like two hours to kill. And I was hanging out with Hodo, a very, very yeah. popular, very nice comic. And she's like, oh, I wish we could do a show. I'm like, you know, if we Ubered, we could just go do my show and then just come back. So we literally, between his set, just snuck in two extra spots. Nice. I've been Damn. screaming on a mic for like five hours at this point. <laughs> I'm raspy voiced. I'm like, oh, yeah, I have a podcast tomorrow morning. I should <laughs> eat a Halls, maybe have a tea or something. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, so like it, it's nice to like be able to look back and be like, okay, it's been four years. And like you could, if you really apply yourself, you could work your way out from like just being heckled by the meanest people mm. to like, you know, doing a comedy bar main stage show. It takes That's a lot, awesome, man. Uh, but also, you know, uh, uh, man, I'm just really happy. No one know, knew how badly I sucked. Like, uh, That's all right. I, I will, I will send you guys a clip from this yeah, from the video. Yeah. I just want to see you. I just want to see what you look like. I want to see this green blazer. Listen, it, it, it was the most horrific. I went to Value Village. I was just like, I need to find a blazer. I'm like 20. I don't even have a, like a full suit yet. Yeah. So I was just like, where, where can I find a blazer? My did, va- did you roll up the arms of the blazer? Yo, listen, I did. <laughs> and just before I went out, my buddy Val grabbed my arms. He's like, no, I can't let you do this. And he just rolled them back down. I'm like, what? What? He's like, to Miami Vice. So I'm like, I don't get the reference. So Went up on stage, yo. Uh, I had, oh uh, man, I I want to send you guys this. You do not show it to no, anyone. We you won't. say, well, why right now? No. You don't show it to anyone. It'll be a Snapchat. Yeah, it'll be snap it over. <laughs> just a video of me, just all puffy, holding like a ginger ale, pretending it's a beer because I want everyone to think I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like you. I, I'm still hello, you know. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. From that, we came to tell you at Comedy Brawl, and I was like, this guy has presence. Yo, like, I, he is mad comfortable up here. Uh, uh, Lots uh, of smiles. I, Lots of smiles. I appreciate that. Yeah. He seems so smiles. happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, listen, I'm having the time of my life. I, I At one point, I, I went to university for, like, pre-med. Like, I, I was on the, uh, I did an internship at Chio. I was, on the, mm. I was like, literally, I was like, oh, I want to be so like a good a, Muslim oh, boy. Oh, oh buddy, uh, my mom had my whole life planned out for me already. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? She had it from, from grade school to high school to university. She's like, no, 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 you will apply to these programs I'm like okay mama and then just did it anyway yeah. and uh, I guess halfway through like you know I, I liked doing that but like I was always a creative dude I worked on the university paper I liked doing all these sketches and like uh, 
I couldn't let go. So I just started like slowly letting it slip in kind of a thing from time to time. And then, you know, uh, I ended up getting a job at like uh, in the government. So my mom was like happy enough, you know, like I didn't go to med school, but yeah. I saw a good job and everything. Yeah. And man, like I got hooked. It was addictive. And uh, I consumed so much comedy at that point, just watching all these old specials that the only thing I realized, I'm like, I thought it was funny, but I'm like, hey, these people are very confident. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key to comedy is just right. going up there and like pretending you know what you're doing. Yeah. And at that point, my mom had told me an expression, fake it till you make it. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. So I used to go up there all bubbly, smiling, filled with confidence and zero jokes. I was <laughs> the most confident, a stream unfunny. Of consciousness. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It was just like saying, this guy is saying nothing. Nothing confidently. It's yeah. great. <laughs> Not a laugh. Just some polite eating and just some drinking. And then we're just kind of like, well, good. Good, yeah. good for him. Yeah. 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 And I think he showed had up. a good time. He showed I, think, <laughs> I, thought the, I thought the comedy just came later. I'm like, if I was just confident enough, someone hey. will tell me how to write a joke and then uh, so I'll funny. do that part. And and that's literally it. And uh, I, I didn't really realize this. And like, I didn't go to school for comedy. It was just mm -hmm. a thing I liked to do. Uh, and you just pick up snippets from people and everyone's just like, go up there and like, enjoy yourself. Like, why are you going to get up on stage and talk to people who are there for a show? You, mm -hmm. you guys paid money. You're, you know, you have a sense of not entitlement, but you're like, I want to enjoy this. Right. And if I go up and half ass it, you're going to be very angry. Yeah. And now that you know what my Instagram and Twitter is, I will hear about it from you. <laughs> yeah. uh, so like, you know, half the time it's just going up there and really selling it. Like I, I'm, I'm a salesman pitching you some good jokes yeah, man, you're yeah. really comfortable yeah. up there oh, like it, it's easy to come on the ride with you that's the ah, thing where i was like I watching that, that guy i was like I i'm not I, I may not uh catch every single punchline. the jokes are definitely there but i'm like this is fun like this oh. is a fun guy to watch yeah and, and like uh, i'm i'm basically just trying to uh give you a sh three short three minute movie like mm -hmm. you know like, like a sketch i want you guys to kind of be like on board with the roller coaster. you know that's that's interesting to say because of the fact that you like you like sketch comedy a lot I love it what's so what's interesting is that what's what's and you said it's easy to go on the ride mm -hmm. i'm gonna like uh, to mirror that i remember listening to your bit and remembering oh yeah I, I can see my I can see you on mm -hmm. the the subway platform like that that joke that you have with about the kid like I can see that and you build you build it up pretty well. It's what? like uh, the finger snaps for this guy. It's just like it's, yeah. it's oh. like quite. Un, it's like I'm not gonna interrupt, but this is an applaud. You know, it's like just. <laughs> It's a sitting ovation. <laughs> so like a, that really does bleed into your comedy. That's interesting. Because uh. I've always been a storyteller. I like writing more, more than I like performing. I, to be honest, I'll mm -hmm. tell you this now. I fucking hate performing. I hate You being don't on hate stage. performing? I, I, you don't hate being on stage? It's, 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 I don't uh, even know this that guy. I'm like, you don't. Because no, I genuinely hate being the center of attention. Like I, I do mm -hmm. it on necessity Like because I, I have jokes. I want to you know, express myself. But if I could just write a really good joke and mm -hmm. get like a hundred bucks for it, I'd be like, yeah, Selma, you do this Muslim joke. And she kills. Yeah. I'm like, ah. I I like that. All right, those claps are kind of. Uh, I'll take ten percent of those claps. Yeah. Well, if you got a joke about being a hijabi, I think it. I, I, <laughs> Listen, you may I, not I mean, be the that's right pretty guy damn good. To, uh, <laughs> I, I'm just saying it's a very progressive time we're in. I, yeah. I'm saying I, I, my mom has some really nice hijabs. <laughs> I could probably wear one, pull it one off. Probably. It's uh, 2019. It, it's it, it's. I love that 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 no one has ever questioned this, but I love that stating the year immediately yeah. it reinforces some level of. Like progressivism we've like, come so far but imagine yeah. if you're like we're in the year 500 guys like stop sacrificing your children to yeah. the gods like come on <laughs> that's but, true like every year is the year I don't that's I don't understand that yeah <clears throat> I wonder what will be next year no clue no clue no that being clue. said you mentioned that you you consumed a lot of comedy oh yeah that's what I do that's my game oh mm -hmm. I'm, body. I'm not I, I, I don't feel like I ever want to go on stage and tell jokes like I like the podcast. That's yeah. how it is. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be doing improv next week, though. Ooh! Oh, so you're gonna be doing improv next week. So I will 100 like, be there. No joke. He's I will just gonna like twist my arm. That's yeah, how he I'm does just it. gonna book it. <clears throat> that's how. I, that's 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 how. I will text people go. right now. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Nonetheless, uh, what was uh, like some of the comedians that you uh, you still go back to? So I was a TV dude mm -hmm. growing up. So like uh, like this is gonna be so stupid, but like coming to Canada, the two things that like are visually in my head, like these are things like. Uh, the base level of comedy, Mr. Bean. Hmm. Okay. Because Mr. Okay. Bean, like, because the nothing's in dialogue. Uh, it's yeah. it's all action. So like, it transcends language. You could literally watch it anywhere and just watch this man in circumstances. I remember just being like uh, six, and my kids, uh, my, my kids, my sisters, uh, we're like uh, six, five, and four, and my mom, and we were just in like this apartment in, in Newfoundland, and 
we're just watching a Mr. Bean Christmas VHS tape that someone had just lent us. Like yeah. we, we're in the country for like three months at this point. We don't have anything. And I remember dying laughing so hard. Yeah. And like, so to me, the, the first thing was just the visualness of it. Like there was no dialogue. It was just a pure action. Yeah. And I remember just like for the longest time, I still would sometimes watch, you know, uh, Mr. Bean YouTube clips. Mm-hmm. Um, Third Rock from the Sun. Mm. I love that show. I love clowning. I like the physicalness of it. Um uh-huh. Uh, I used to watch. This is so. I'm, I grew up in Ottawa, so uh, the only comedy I ever knew was either the Absolute or Yuck Yucks downtown, and I was you know much too young to be able to go down. Right. And it was just a Comedy Central, right. uh, Comedy Network. So I used to watch like these '80s and '90s comedy specials, like no uh, I, uh, Lewis Black. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, like uh, yeah. Uh, I thought sure. that's yeah, right. Yeah, like, I remember that. And when I started doing comedy, like when I really and like I you remember watching his specials would come on so often. Yeah. I'd be like, this guy's a genius. <laughs> so every time I would go. Uh, do comedy or I would try to do comedy it would just be me angrily right. screaming into a mic I'm like how's mic? the guy ranting for 30 minutes but it seems to be funny and, it, and, and, so and then everyone's just like hey you know you don't have to yell I was like oh, oh that's new uh, you could just talk that's amazing uh, I remember watching young Dave Chappelle uh, mm. uh, when he did his uh, comedy uh, Death Jam uh, yes yeah. Yeah, and yeah, uh, when click, click, oh click. yeah okay. Yeah. When Killing Them Softly came out, yeah, that was a game changer. That yeah. broke my brain. Right. It's too good. It's too good. It's still it, good. It's, it's still, still damn great. good. You listen to what you watch it again. It's like, and this fuck. guy's like twenty something at this point. Yeah. Like it's it's what Delirious or even Raw was mm-hmm. back then. And like I remember, and I, I used to watch all these specials. But I, I remember watching Delirious. I remember watching uh, Live on the Sunset Strip. Uh, Richard, Richard Pryor. Pryor. Right. But I was like. S- like 16, 17, um, and it was just... Man, your parents are just letting you watch Richard Pryor. <laughs> yo, my mom... Because <laughs> I think you're just talking about like yo, doing cocaine yo, most of the time. <laughs> my mom, God bless her, she's a hardworking uh, woman, uh, you know, uh, always out there making money so, you know, she could raise her kids and TV raised us. If she wasn't right. there, TV yeah. was doing the heavy lifting yeah, yeah. and my sisters would like be like, okay, can we watch Passions or like, you know, Young and the Restless? I'm like, oh, okay, that's yeah. fine, but in, in an hour, I got to watch Lewis Black. Okay, come on, let's <laughs> yeah. do this. Yeah, yeah. And so, and like, uh, so a lot of my stuff was just either uh, really physical comedy or just old school 70s uh, George Carlin yeah. I didn't know who any of these people were because right. I didn't have a frame of context there was right. no real internet I, mm-hmm. I had AOL dial up I couldn't google these people yet I was on like LimeWire and Napster right. trying to download albums yeah. and then just getting gratuitous horrible porn like I'm like I don't know this, yeah. I wanted Carlin oh, not this you, I don't sometimes want this. you couldn't even not not download porn you would try to download something else like a movie trailer and you get porn Yo, I, I remember being so angry uh, there was a movie this is gonna be super stupid. It's it starred Antonio Banderas as like Zorro. A, no, no, no. It, it, he was like a, a, a an Arab merchant. It was like twelve warriors or whatever. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thirteen. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking okay, about. Let me go. Let me check it out. Let me check it out. Okay. And I remember I watched that in the theater, son. Did you? We have to talk about this movie. We have to talk about this movie because Antonio Banderas. Okay, listen, mm. I. Because uh, we're going to talk about movies and, you know, uh, uh, cultural appropriation and, and everything. Sure, but like, sure. uh, 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 we have I have a list, guys. I have many things to talk about. But, like, I remember being, like, uh, uh, I, I, I was, like, 14 or 15. And I'm, like, I really wanted to watch this movie because, like, I didn't see a lot of brown dudes on screen. Right. Uh, like, I, I'm a Trekkie. And, like, Ricardo Montalban uh, played uh, Khan Nguyen Singh. It was, right. a, it, was a, it was a Latin uh, uh, American actor playing, uh, um, uh, you know, Khan. I guess technically a brown dude, like a, an Indian, Indian guy, the character. In, in Star Trek yep. but I'm yes. like at least at least he's brown like, right. he's, he's, he's like, a shade of brown you know and like, <laughs> Take it. so Antonio Banderas playing like a I think it was like a um, was it an Arab prince the 13th warrior 13th warrior and yeah. did he play an Arab prince or an Arab what was his name in there in, in, in oh yeah uh, wait a like second. Second. Stand, stand by stand by because I remember his friends were like I want to say Ahmed Viking. Ibn Fadlan. Whoa! It has an ibn. You know you're serious when you have an ibn. I, Super I, Arab. They, they were, that guy had looked in. Like this is like this is like a '90s movie too. Like someone had to look in like an Encyclopedia Britannica to make mm. sure to, like they had what ibn was. And I remember <laughs> being like, I need to see this movie, but I couldn't watch it in theater. So I remember downloading it. I was so pumped. It took forever yeah. on LimeWire. It used to take days. Yeah, yeah. Day, yeah. Like yeah. these kids these days. You I know. know I feel like an oh. old old. I am an I elder know. millennial, but like, like they don't like. It's almost like the fact that you can download. And like in megabytes and mm-hmm. gigabytes, like uh, that fast. Yeah, I remember it was like six days. I was pacing. My room was the you, computer you can't room. Check. No, you can't. You, you can't. Check. You, you can't. You, you, you can't, don't know. Uh, there's Anything no progress. Yeah. And I remember. And my sisters were like, "Why? Why? You t- it takes forever." I'm like, "I need this. Just, yeah. I need this." No one okay? on the phone. And it really downloads. Bad. I'm super pumped. I get my popcorn. I get my apple juice. I, I press play. <laughs> I got apple and juice it's and popcorn. Just <laughs> gratuitous. 
gay porn. It's oh, just no. a 90 minutes of gay porn. And I, I remember just throwing my popcorn And you're like, in the fuck air. it. I'm, I might as well watch it at this For point. For the first 10 <laughs> minutes. Because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you're just crying. It, it was a lot of dudes in cloaks. I'm like, is this the 13th uh, warrior? And, uh, you know? But it, it was gay porn. And I was like, you know what? Well, fine. And I just deleted it. And I was... Yeah. And I haven't watched that movie. I didn't watch that movie until like maybe two years ago. Wow. When wow, I you went back. Listen, I was very angry, okay? I mean, I, so you like just, just really wanted to really want to <laughs> make, really make to watch good this. on that. Yeah. And it was a good movie. He it's would, not too he bad. He would get cast as, if they had any Arabs to cast, they're like, yeah, Antonio, every time. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, he's close like, enough. Who else were you going to get? Yeah. Six, I genuinely can't 6. even 6. think. 6.6 on IMDb. Ben Ken- Kingsley. Sorry? 6.6 on IMDb. Uh, ben right. Kingsley, it would be like, yeah, him and Antonio. Yeah, yeah, Ben Kingsley gets that. That I didn't even realize Ben Kingsley was brown. Did you know Ben Kingsley's brown? With a name like Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley? Yeah, look brown? up his real name. When I when he was in Gandhi, like, and it was in the 90s, I was like, how is this guy playing Gandhi? He's not brown. He is a person of color? Dude, I think he's Punjabi. What's Ben Kingsley's? Is, and he is like, he has a... Stand by. Stand by. Part. Get that for it. Okay. Born Krishna Pandit Bhanji. Bhanji! Krishna! <laughs> Ben I'm Kingsley. actually <laughs> so happy right now. Are you kidding? How did that Pokemon become this Pokemon? Like sometimes you're like, what happened? Where did Ben come from? Like if your name is like, maybe like Carl, like it's, it's, right. it's closer. Where do you get ah. Benjamin? I think he was like, uh, there's no like easy segue here. Four Just wives. make a hard, you, like, you pick what you want. No you easy know? segue. Four wives. In a row? Wow. Or at the same time? No, no, no. <laughs> That'd be the brownest. Yo, <laughs> the throwback. No, no. The guy okay. knighted, he's like, no, give me, no, give me all the bitches. Give, give me all, all the bitches. Okay, first marriage, 1966 to 1976. Well, yeah. And mm-hmm. then the, the next one, 1978 to 1992. Dang, that's that's a, a that's fair a, bit. That's a stretch. Uh, after that, 2003 to 2005. That uh, one did not last. I was just like... And then finally, sure. 2007, 2007 to current. Oh, nice. Well, God bless the guy. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, he I'm was, not going to lie. It makes me feel a lot better that I think so, a, yeah. a white dude didn't play Gandhi. Yeah, right? Okay. Our best, one of the best brown guys, not ours. What's your background? Yo, this. Because you could be anything. Wait, do you have my, a guess? What? Do you remember what he said? Because I forgot what he told me. His this race is my was favorite thing. I, okay, I, wait, hold on a second. I, uh, let's figure this out. Look, look into the camera for a second so the people can like, <laughs> yeah, like have their own guess. Your if you're yeah. on YouTube, yeah. this guy's. Uh, yeah. All right. Come back. Now you're wearing me out. Come back. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> stop. Stop. Stop immediately. Yeah. Because like this guy, this you look at him. A very different kind of. His podcast. name is also could be like Hisham. Yeah. Like yeah. that could be anything. This is yeah. listen. Uh, outside of Toronto, everyone knows what I am. Uh, here, I am the most racially ambiguous person yeah. ever. I love I mean, it. I mean, I mean, I mean. This is great. Do 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 the, do do. I'm gonna go Sudanese. Do, Sudanese. Do, I mean that that seems a little too do, easy. I think it's, you're going to go Eritrean. Yes, you like, yes, like that's exactly words. what I was going for. All right, cool. That's exactly what I was How going for. How are we doing? Okay, gentlemen. Uh, yeah. The question is, what race am I? You're, you're black. Okay, okay. Interesting. Now. Yes. Where am I from? Uh, Eritrea. Eritrea. Hey, I'm, not, I'm very happy. Do you, you get a samosa? Not. What do we get? Uh, you'll get injera. If you're gonna go, <laughs> right. if you're gonna go to retreat, I'm gonna get you injera. No, we like maybe samosas. some beef tips. We'll right, see right, what's right, up. Right. I'll, I'll cook you some great. I food. wonder if our samosas are different. 100. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, the main dish? Uh, we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn gonna, about people. You know what? Today. I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna say shiro. Uh, it's like a shiro. It's staple. Oh, no. it's is there S-H-I-R-O. a good Eritrean restaurant in in the city? Yeah, there is. I can also just cook for you. Okay. Hey, listen, uh, uh, my mom raised three very strong, independent black women, uh, me included. Okay, she, <laughs> she had two sisters and me. She's like, I'm just raising you all as women. Yeah. I am the. I'm a an amazing housewife. I cook. I clean. That's awesome. I'm very domesticated. I uh, like. I like what her mentality would be. Is like, you know what? Uh, I don't have the time to raise you differently. So you're all girls because oh, there's already two girls, one guy. So what do you want me to do? And, and my mom, my and I, you know, a single parent household. Uh, my mom raised all three of us, oh, sure. and my mom raised me to be what she assumed like a man needed to be. So I can lift up heavy things i can nice. talk about my feelings articulately mm. and i'm great at cooking i am uh, uh wow. i'm the perfect husband guys dude wow all nice right we're, put, we're putting it out there no thank you so much yeah. we'll put it in we'll let you, you guys know. can get together man. Uh, is yeah. like gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> hey listen i will commit yeah. into a strong muslim relationship I, I will commit see i just looked up shiro just because i wanted to know what it looked like yes what's it look like? what's what's this is what this is what we're looking I, at i think here. it's like pureed chickpeas uh, some, is uh, a homogenous sauce. stew whose primary ingredient is powdered chickpeas and broad bean not skinny bean uh <laughs> it's often prepared with the addition of minced onions garlic and depending upon the regional variation Damn. uh ground ginger and mm. chopped tomatoes mm. and chili peppers and Shiro- a clay pot 
is served uh, always in Jira. In Jira? In Jira is uh, our bread, yes. Okay, bread. Leaven, leavened bread. Uh, or unleavened. What is unleavened and leaven? So it's basically, I think it's you're either adding flour or yeast for it to grow. It's either dark or white. It's you're either dark injera hmm. or white injera. Okay, okay. Sounds a little racist. <laughs> uh, the dark's origin. obviously the better. Yeah, well, that's basically it. <laughs> Eritrean, Eritrean yeah. Ethiopia. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Can you tell I'm, Ethiopians apart from Eritreans just out of curiosity? Uh, yeah, technically, you know, just it's like saying know. Americans versus Canadians. It's like, oh, it's white, but you can kind of tell. Oh, yeah. I can, tell, you can. Can tell. I can tell Indians and Pakistanis. I can tell Americans and Canadians from, apart from very much from each other. Really? really? Uh, like Indians, you get Pakistan, a white Canadian and a white American. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Americans have much more. <laughs> I like how much confidence he has. Like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Americans have much more sharper faces and bigger foreheads, Whoa. and Canadians look almost like soft. If that makes any sense, like they, like Whoa. you pour <laughs> like skim milk in a uh, a coffee just to, to, to <laughs> dilute it down. <laughs> Listen, I have. I'm, I'm, a I'm keen just observer I'm of a, people. All right? I'm so impressed uh, uh, that you did your 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 the way 50, for you to 50. be. Able- you just put up one of those like flashcards. I'll just be like Canadian, American, American, Canadian, 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 American. That- yeah, that, we, we can play that game. When we have you on next time, we'll play this <laughs> game. We're just going to bring up Canadian. I'm going to ask my sister. She's in Austin, Texas. That's oh, just America. Take a, a bunch, bunch of, of pictures of white Can I get 10 pictures of your white friends? And, and then, then I'll have 10 pictures, 10 pictures of, of my white oh, friends. Buddy. And we'll play a game. I am going to freak you out <laughs> how good I am at this. I'm going to freak you out. It's going to be our version of uh, Talking Black. And, and we'll also, just throw like one Russian in there yeah. for like. Oh, oh you good think measure. you're gonna trip me up? Bring it, bring oh, it. No, I, can, I, I feel like I, I can pick I can, out a Russian. I can pick up a Russian. I, I feel like Russian. a Russian's holding a rock for no reason the whole time. Just like what? <laughs> it's just like bro. If you see a white person and you feel instinctively scared, they're Russian. Okay, they're Russians Russian. are the yeah. scariest, scariest of white, white people. people. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Kill me. Hundred yeah. percent. That's true. I have a I have a problem with uh with regards to uh what's his name, uh Trevor Noah and his Russian joke. Oh, what's his Russian joke? Well, his Russian joke is something along the lines of, uh, if I'm scared, so for example, I got to wake up at night, I watch a scary movie, something along those lines, and I go to the washroom, for me to be able to go to the washroom and not be scared, he talks to himself in a Russian accent. <laughs> it's like, big boy is going to pee pee right now, and then he feels good about himself. That that joke is so close to the to, to the Don's, what was it? What was the it white guy in Conan. Yeah. That's how okay. I remember him. Yeah. Sorry. Um, it's a it's a very close premise yeah the and like, premise is very and his was so much better but like the thing is is that like I, it's so close trevor noah's things is so close mm-hmm. and then uh later on there was a lot of people that were that were um that were not a lot of people but there was a lot of people that were complaining about him stealing some jokes trevor so, noah so here's the thing okay yeah. so like uh uh there is a something because like, that's something that's brought up especially when people have um, uh, it's a very topical joke kind of a thing. It's yeah. parallel thought. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. idea that inevitably, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, everyone will come up with the same idea independently yeah. if you think a certain way. We're all comedians. We all have that. Th- we all live in the same zeitgeist. We understand how it kind of works. Mm-hmm. And like, I can understand from both perspectives right. that how, you know, the idea of Russians being the scariest of white people can be kind of wiggled into it. Right. And I, and I understand because a lot of times I've heard jokes are so mm-hmm. similar, mm-hmm. even in wording. Mm-hmm. But there's also the added thing of like, you know, Trevor Noah's a very big popular comedian. Yeah. He may have heard the joke, may have uh, come up with the joke himself, you know, vice versa. He, mm-hmm. The other dude could have heard it kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Robin Williams was apparently oh, he very was well bad, known yeah. for a being presumably a joke thief. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Oh, uh, ha- 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 people would say habitual. Like if, same with Carlos Mencia. If well, you were on guy, a show, you wouldn't do your, yeah, yeah. yeah. you wouldn't do your, oh, Carlos Mencia for sure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything uh, uh, Robin Williams was or wasn't, you know? but this is just what I no, heard. This, 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 Carlos Mencia for sure. Oh, maybe. This yes. story is, this story is uh, with uh, like um, Robin Williams, because you know Robin Williams stand up is very quick. It's oh. like it's just like like rapid fire, which mm-hmm. you know that, that that was his thing. Absolutely love him. Uh, the live on Broadway is amazing. There'd be, there'd be times where he will do a joke and he's just running through stuff and he's doing a joke and then later on realizes that he stole a joke. Mm. Then he would go to the the comedian, he would write a check and be like, "Because yeah, listen, I did I, and that's exactly what I would hurt." Yeah. And like, let's that's boss. Like if that, like he wouldn't even and big ass that. checks too. And like, because like. Like in, as a comedian, that's like sacrosanct to the, yeah. to, to steal someone else's joke because yeah. these are very personal things. Yeah. Most of the time, you spend a lot of time working on them, right. and it's like someone it's like someone stealing a, a, a Da Vinci painting and be like, "It's mine," right. kind of a thing. Uh, and Robin Williams, I'm not saying he did or didn't, but I even I heard the same story of yeah. that's such a boss move to be like, "I'm not even going to question it." You know what? I'm sorry. Yeah. Check money, and that and that's yeah. that's a gangster move. I'd Come, be okay with that. You yeah. know, and, and same deal. And like yeah. uh, I I can't say because. I've never heard anything bad about Trevor Noah, and yep. I, I. But I love him, like, and I love him too. I like it, yeah. But I, I can understand from both sides, right. and like I'm always gonna 
you know, side in the air, you know, on, on the uh, on air, be like, eh, maybe it was just you know parallel thought, because mm-hmm. that is a thing a lot of people That's use fair. as defense. That's but. fair. They be, but the thing is, is that uh, my some of my favorite comedians, yeah, uh, they don't get close to someone else's joke. That's you see true. what I'm saying? Like, okay. uh, like if I listen to a full set of Bill Burr, I don't I don't hear mm-hmm. other people's jokes in Bill like Bill Burr's thing. You leave the, you listen to Dave Chappelle. That is Dave Chappelle. Mm. Mm. People can't even get close. To telling like a Dave Chappelle style joke, right? I, mean, I, I guess I understand like you know he's 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 a very unique guy and arguably one of the best of our time right now. But like a lot of like my favorite comedians, their jokes stand on their own, and they, there's never like how many specials that Bill Burr's had or how many mm. specials that uh, Dave Chappelle's had, and the there's there's almost no argument that oh it's kind of close to. Like they don't even get in the realm of parallel thinking because their 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 thought process was so unique. For sure, That's I get true. that. You know, because it's it's uh, sometimes it's just joke jokes versus like a personal story. Because you yeah. can't steal a Chappelle bit or a Bill Burr bit. Right, uh, you'd have uh, to live their life. You yeah. have to, and then yeah. you, you have to sound like them. You have to like you. You're, like everyone just look at you yeah. and be like that's not your joke yeah. right but when it comes to, like punchlines too yeah a hundred percent because like sometimes i like i hear comedians even guys online uh um with like you know actual comics w- what i would hear is an internet joke like something yeah. i may have seen on reddit but yes. i'm like oh wait no they they actually probably the reddit guys probably stole from the comics and it just became right. just a joke out mm-hmm. in the world right. now where yeah. um uh, i remember someone uh i forget what it was but some, i remember someone said like uh you ever drink so much you uh, sound like you're talking in cursive, and uh, I remember I, I remember I heard that from a comedian, right. but then like two weeks later I saw the internet, and then I saw it on a tweet, and like and it just becomes like a joke everyone's kind right, of using. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like ah, it kind of sucks because like yeah, yeah, because mm, yeah. a lot, of, and that's why I'm like oh, you know what, maybe I'll just talk more about being a black Muslim because you're gonna have to be a very specific kind of person to steal that joke yeah, from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I've been at a show where I'm supposed to go up and have my like six seven jokes uh, or stories whatever. And had a guy say one of the jokes that I was about to say. Like, literally, I'm like, oh, wow. And then I was like, I had two thoughts. I'm like, I am extremely unoriginal. Because <laughs> I'm like, how this guy is a brown guy, too. Right, right, right. And it was, I was like, yeah, if any brown guy gave this subject some thought, we would both come to the same conclusion. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then sometimes I'm just like, maybe just some of these thoughts are just out there. Like, these brainwaves are out there. If you think yeah. about this subject, you're going to come to this conclusion. My my issue with that Russian joke mm. is that it's too close. Mm. Because, like, the first time I heard that Russian bit yeah. mm. was was that Conan bit. Oh, it's great. It's and, a good bit. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, we'll show you after. Yeah, yeah, I would like it. to see it. Yeah. And then and then right after that, I, I had bought tickets to go watch at the Sony Theater to watch Trevor Noah. And I sat oh, yeah, there and watched. Oh, yeah, just for laughs. Right, right, right. And so I'm listening there, and then he enters the same joke. I'm like, it's too close. It's the same time. It's like, like... Come on, man! Yeah. Could, there was so much. Like I liked his, I liked his entire uh, right. set. I yeah. thought Trevor Noah's set Trevor was amazing. Noah's specifically, amazing. You've seen Trevor Noah a couple of times now. Uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen him twice so far. Yeah, yeah. Son of yeah. Patricia. So I'm a, I'm a big, a big fan. Yeah, big fan. Uh, did you like Patricia's son? Yeah, yeah. It's good too. I, I, I good like too. all of it just because I'm like, hey, you can relate to all of this. Yeah, like, that's it's, true. It's easy listening yeah. to me. I love it. Yeah. No, he is definitely very. He, there's also this other thing. I think this is really cool uh, for his show. It's called Between the Scenes. Oh, I don't know. This so, one. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, should watch these. These are great. Yeah, yeah. and he they post it uh, predominantly on Facebook. I don't know if it's on YouTube. It's on like like Instagram too. I, I okay, think, yeah. yeah. And so basically, what happens is that in between scenes of the show, the Daily Show, um, he just he just workshop. Well, he doesn't workshop, but he's just interacting with the crowd, and he mm. tells like smaller like jokes that don't really fit in the show. And it's right. like while they're like he's just too. working on material. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and while nice. he's like while they you know the camera in the back is like resetting, and they're like doing all the stuff, so he'll tell a story and. It's, some of it is really funny. It's really great. I think that's a really smart way to just make the most of that time. Yeah, for sure. You're there, you got a captive audience. Yeah, you might as well just work that. Yeah. He had a bit about about playing with bricks. You're going to ruin it? No, I'm not going to ruin it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to ruin it. Yo, but, no hesitation. They had a lot to lot of boom. Uh, no, I felt, I just as a comic, I was like, you're about to say... No, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. But it is interesting because like, you know, he's from uh, from a third South world country, South, mm. South Africa. They don't have much to play with. And so like when they could steal bricks, there was different levels of bricks and the game around these Damn. bricks. Is, like it was a really good bit. How, how old were you when you moved over? Oh, I was young as shit. I was like five or six. Okay. So you don't even have like any stories about like... I do, but they're all like uh, told. They're, well, they're because they're, we used to go back for a little while. I remember, <laughs> like, do you remember your earliest memory? Like, do you have like? Can you like? Can I you, I remember it to the because I remember literally asking my mom how old I am. Nice. I remember that. I nice. remember where I was, where she was, what she was doing. I was three. I remember I was in Jeddah. It was nice. me, my mom, my dad, 
And I think I was young enough that my sister, my second sister had been born, but not my my third sister. Mm -hmm. And all I remember is my mom screaming like like this is like the memory of like like becoming a person like we're like ding ding like like, like there's like uh, that chicken music. I remember holding you remember those like barbecue lighters. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember holding this, and I remember my mom screaming. Uh, uh, especially because she was in the bathroom. It's, it's Saudi Arabia. There's it's water rationing all the time, mm. and she's like got like a bucket in like she's trying to dump water from the like the bathtub, and she's screaming. And I just I'm like holding this, and I turn, and there's just a wall of garbage on fire. And I just apparently I liked playing with fire as a child, uh, and I so lit I. what and thank you. All right, so it's not just me. Yeah. I lit what ended up being a piece of garbage on fire, which then just caught all the garbage on fire. Jeez, man! So there was like a small just like funnel of fire in our kitchen <laughs> and my hilarious. mom just with her hij- I remember just her, her red hijab in the background she's just throwing water cursing me but being like oh you're just a baby but god damn it and just throwing water <laughs> I, and I was just like yeah and I remember being like three or four as a child this happened happy about this you're getting like a dopamine yeah hit. you know I was just like <laughs> look what I did yes I made fire oh. jeez but it was very castaway it was castaway before castaway interesting no uh, yeah castaway. I went I went through a fire phase yeah, I yeah. think all bo- a so, lot of boys, a lot of like, how do you not have a fire face? My Every- mom still won't let me touch matches. Every time there's a birthday party, she slaps them yeah. on my hand, just gives me the look, which is right. wide. Like, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, she's got PTSD. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like oh. you punching the air, and she's trying to, like, <laughs> her firstborn and only son, her little baby prince, just burning half the apartment. Yeah. What'd you light on fire? Uh, no, I didn't. I Oh, wait. Uh, no, I did. Okay, so uh, brother in arms. The way the way how it happens is that every time I would go to Mauritius when I was a kid, yeah. there would be a new fad that's happening in Mauritius, yeah. and I would just latch onto it, and then it would become mine. So yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> one time, I, <laughs> I all right. So I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So one time we went just really a while ago. Everyone was playing with yo-yos, yeah. but yeah. Oh, but in but in Canada, yeah, yeah. yo-yos is not a thing mm-hmm. here ever, never. Mm-hmm. But over there, yo-yos, Coca-Cola, yo-go, yo-yos, everything. Right? How old were you? Shit, I don't know. 27. No, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm probably, I, I know this by grade, so it's probably grade um, like a five or six. It's because like, when I was, 10 12, 10 uh, when around 10, yeah. in Pakistan, Coca-Cola had a huge yo-yo push uh-huh. and they were just giving out yo-yos. Oh, okay, so we're about to, And yeah, I think okay, cool. we, like that what? fad, we might have had the same fad, but around, oh, at the same shit. time in different countries. Wait, I still wait, have my yo Coca-Cola was just pushing. So yeah, that wasn't yeah. just a, a toss away. You meant like they were at, Actual Coca Cola Yo- yo-yos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yo-yos. Yo-yos was were huge, and Coke was for in Pakistan just handing people, just giving people yo-yos. Yeah. I still have it in yeah. my in my box upstairs. Fine. Anyway, nonetheless, the thing is, is you that like, a yo-yo on fire? No, man, oh, I'm just God, merely man. saying <laughs> how I got <laughs> to the fire. So just anyway, whipping it around. So yeah, that would and, be. And my dad was big about like when you go to like if you go to Mauritius, yeah, you're gonna hear the adhan. If you hear the adhan, you gotta if you have to crawl. You, you gotta go, to the, go. You gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. And so, uh, one of the things to make the the trip there thing was play with yo yo. Mm. Another year, I go there, uh, and I'm just hanging out mostly with my uncle because I, I think I went by myself. Mm. And uh, he he smoked he smoked a lot, <laughs> and uh, the it's just the way how he like lights a cigarette mm-hmm. was just so not it's not romantic in the right. like it's just like cool, cool. yes yeah. so cool like, right come on. we could say yeah. we're grown man it right. was cool as so shit he, so like, he put, yeah he put, it's true it is cool and he would drive so he's Refire. driving a manual car Yo. which for me is like yeah. because I always you know I obviously love manual cars this is so every he, brown uncle he ever he would do right this now. and then he would take his uh, his elbow he puts it on the steering wheel and he pulls out a mat it's not a match book it's a match box right yeah puts the cigarette in his mouth and while he's driving yeah right he lights it goes like this and then Damn. throws it out in like one deaf movement like yeah. just just <laughs> the like just yeah. just the economy of movement he just sold you that's yeah. decades yeah. of just cigarette yeah. smoking <laughs> right it's down to a fucking just three moves <laughs> so and so um me to be kind of feel a little bit like him yeah i would uh i would buy matchbooks excuse me i would buy matchboxes mm-hmm. and just light matches over and over and over again and then learn different ways to, to, to light them right yep. so you would like hold the box you put the match on top and you flick hold it, it like and it. you flick it and it lights and yeah. then if you want if you get real daring you put your hand against like the thing and then just push it like, like that and then you start it out and then it started when like other cousins were starting to get into it because like you see these lighting matches I want to light matches too and it's right? affordable too right? it's obviously like, super easy yeah. it's super fun it's a fire bender right? over here right. I love it and then there was something called the Zulu matches Zulu matches right oh, almost racist keep going <laughs> I'm pretty pretty sure but <laughs> because the box didn't say zulu but everyone knew them as like if you go and ask for these for this matchbox yeah you had to ask i, I need Were the zulu like black matches. chops what hmm? 
Uh, they were they were <laughs> they were super intense in in that when you light them the like immediately it tur- it's blue first damn Ooh, right so it what are you really burning pretty. that's not Yo, that's <laughs> really industrial pretty. level yeah. yeah but i guess like i think almost it was like if you're underwater and you light it you could light it that's for a little so bit funny. anyway so then then i graduated the zulu matches and at night time oh, you if you're going to terror. like if you're going yeah. for asia you're just flicking blue flames at people Yo. that was that was fun then i kind of like like you know you 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 feed the beast yeah and so uh i had this idea of what if i just if we had like toilet paper and you could light the toilet paper oh my god so I, we draped like f- uh, a fair bit on some stairs right and then for each what? stair Are we would we would put you? We would put like match match sticks uh-huh. just to like feed the Keep flame the f- as you go up. Right? Yo, <laughs> and then at the top, kind of built like a like a like a tampon. So like, uh, <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Sorry. All right. So you take you take a bunch of matches, right? <laughs> uh, and all like the where the where the heads are, and you 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 put like maybe ten and ten together. Uh-huh. Then you roll them in like tissue paper. Like in the, in the in the roll of tissue. So like a it's low like, level like, incendiary yeah, bomb, bomb right now. <laughs> you made a bomb. This and is... then you put a little bit of Simtex, <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> and you put it at the top, and then you just light the bottom, and then you just see it as it walks up. It's sort of like a reverse fire slinky as it goes yeah. up the stairs. And, and then, then I'm assuming it, when it hits the top, it doesn't really blow. What happens is that it catches on fire, and then it because there's so much uh, yeah. that's happening in the middle, it pushes all of the the sticks out, and then you get like a like a little uh, gentleman. Thing there. Video podcast. We're doing this <laughs> uh, next week. Then- I'm gonna bring my fire extinguisher from home <laughs> and have bring nine one one and a right, job oh. and a bucket. <laughs> Yo, oh, straight up, no joke. Her I'll buy it too. Yeah. Yeah. The auntie next door saw that us doing fun. this and started oh, yelling at us. Of course, like, yeah. we're gonna let, because you know everything is very tight in Mauritius, right? Mm. And so she had her clothes drying in the oh sun. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, you're gonna my clothes Burn are gonna catch the entire fire. island, bro. What's wrong? <laughs> So uh, that was yeah, my fire yeah. thing. I did it. For, I feel a for lot good... less. You know, I feel a lot uh, less bad about I mean, what I yeah. had. Well, nonetheless, we lit a, a dumpster on fire in Texas. Jesus. And uh, just hooligan shit. Huh? I don't even have. Yeah, I don't even have a story. I'm like, yeah, one of the kids <laughs> lit a, a ball on fire, like a tennis ball, Get the fuck with out. like you know gasoline, and then threw a bunch of gasoline in the dumpster and just tossed it in, and uh, it took off. Like the whole dumpster was on fire. So much so that the outside started boiling. You could see bubbles. The, the paint of the oh, actual God. dumpster. Oh yeah, the paint of the dumpster is green. Wow, it starts yeah. boiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm then, assuming you all ran away very quickly. Yeah, well then. But then they people, stayed long enough for them to yeah. see the dumpster <laughs> and then, boiling. And then people started showing up. Like people were like, "Oh my!" Because this is an apartment complex, right? Yo. And then uh, that was our dumpster. That's my story. I don't have a. I don't have a good story. But it's we're all terrible people, shit. by the way. We, yeah, we, we no, caused a lot of property damage. I think this is just every boy. If you don't give them actual, to- if you had an Xbox, yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't be like. For the record, I asked up. my mom for a Game Boy for a very long time, right. and yeah. she said no. You yeah. should have told her. So, Mama, it's kind of your fault. Yeah, I'm just saying. kind of her fault. Yeah, I'm gonna light also, some stuff on fire. Yeah. <laughs> just gonna light stuff on fire. Yeah, man. No, fire is always fun. I love the next fire time I went right back, it was uh, it was much less cooler. It was just it was just Pakistani drama. Ah. even now when i go to a cottage i'm just like yeah let's buy like three bags of firewood and let's let's Yo, i love let's do burning yeah i yeah. love it if i could figure out how to turn bonfire smell into a cologne that's all i would wear that's a manly ass smell oh, yeah. heck yeah heck wow yeah. who what kind of girl do you attract with a bonfire smell uh probably like a, a lot of girls who yeah, uh, watch hockey <laughs> and wear a lot of flannel you know, yeah just come from the forest covered in leaves right He's like ooh, <laughs> where are the, where the marshmallows and the budweiser you smell like my dad <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah daddy issues is Save me a lot of time dating guys. It can. Oh, yeah. It oh, yeah. can. I, can. I think it's a good like starter question. I think Minder or Tinder should have Yo. things with like, you know, stuff like that. Like, hey, these are my these are my disabilities. I got some I got some daddy issues. I got some attachment issues. I, I genuinely think the older we get when like our generation becomes like the mainstream, yeah. it, they're going to have just like, what form of mental illness do you yeah. have? What on the, on the socioeconomic scale? Where I are you? it's good to know. Like, hey, I talk to myself every now and then, you know, like, all right, I'm down with a girl that might do that. Or like, hey, I'm a farter. Oh, I am. At, oh, man, I am. I I'm sleepwalk. I wouldn't mind if I had a Tinder profile. I wouldn't mind like putting that on there. Like, hey, people, just so you know, just, just like can't a picture of you just walking. Yeah, a little one picture is just <laughs> me walking away. <laughs> like this happens. Just 
It's really funny if you get matched with another sleepwalker. Yeah. It's just absolutely like sleepwalking dates. Oh my I know. god. I you wake up like, in the park and it's sunrise and right. like this was You're sweet. Like, oh, this is nice. How'd we get here? I got hyperthermia, but at least I'm not yeah. alone. We we know we planned ahead because we have money tucked in our socks for like the <laughs> taxi ride home. I think that'd be good, man. Sleepwalking. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to marry a woman with that also sleepwalks. Because who would who would stop me? <laughs> Right, if she's sleepwalking that way, I'm sleepwalking this way. I need somebody to at least tell so you me. So you get a dog or a cat? To, oh. Yes. It's like every uh, morning is the is the hangover that's for you. So it's just funny. Like, where were we? What Dude, do we I do? have that. I can. Here, let me show you a picture. So this I, is this is last this, weekend. I know this is dumb, but I would straight up just like attach like a little cord to your arm so you couldn't move from the bed. See, I told say it. Oh wait, Alex, I got this. I got sure. this. You find us the picture. So say it says. I I told him, why don't you just handcuff yourself? Yeah. To to the bedpost. So that uh, you don't actually leave. Amateurs. He's like, you don't, you don't understand. I am seeing a lion in my room. Like I 100% believe there's a lion there. If you're going to handcuff me to a bedpost, I will either break my arm or the bed. I'll figure it out, dude. Interesting. Because yeah, whatever the, the nightmare is, when I wake up, I'm seeing it. Oh, you're having a nightmare-related sleep issue. So I have uh, I have night terrors, which is like, if you see yeah. like a three-legged whatever, when you wake up, it's there. If it touches you, you feel. If it bites you, you but feel. But you can't it. move, right? The night oh, no, I, no, I move. move. I, uh, I, don't have a, I don't have paralysis. I either do that or I have just like quietly sleepwalking for like maybe an hour just folding random, moving things around the room, okay. and then waking up under the, the couch. And then, uh, yeah, those are my two. Yeah. I prefer almost the night terror. Really? Because I can do all sorts of stuff uh, while quietly sleepwalking that I'm not aware of. Exhibit A. Uh. Like, yeah, like this is, uh, this is last weekend. I uh, went to bed at my parents' place. Um, then woke up in the morning to go to the shower. In the shower, uh, couch cushion from... From under the bed, we were just storing this. But I, like, get in out. the dark, was able to get this out and go to the restroom, make it stand, and then and close like, the curtain. I have to, it, like, it's standing perfectly. Like, it's wedged. Yeah, this took the me right a second. way in the tub. This took me a second. I didn't just. Uh, you just didn't drop it. You no. like yeah. placed it there. Yeah, and I woke up and I went to shower and I had my phone checking. I opened it and I was like, picture. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I was like, how did this? And then like my wife is just like, I didn't hear you do that. That's so funny. And I was like, yeah. But sometimes I'll just like, I'll wake up holding knives. Oh. I've woken up, can't find my phone. We're calling, we're calling. It's in the balcony. It snowed. Like, but I had it on top of the barbecue stand. So I'm like, I was outside in the cold and I didn't wake up. Just, yeah. So like. It's like the worst superpower to have. This is indestructible, a but you're anything. asleep. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, this is a cool one. This is what I did once. I like and I'll, I'll tell you, I haven't actually told the story in full, but I feel like with the comic, sometimes you can. So once I had a nightmare that like a snake or an animal was going towards my junk. Yeah. Right? Like you're in your like dreams. Through the, pant, through the pant leg? Through the pant leg or right. at your junk. And it's got it, right? Ooh. Oh, so man, it's got I, it. I, you grab your junk and you're just making sure it doesn't bite your You're grabbing as hard as you can. Right. And I woke up in the morning. And my brother, and I'm naked, just so, like, I just have a shirt because I have done something to my pants. <laughs> so my brother comes in and he's like, what'd you do? And I was like, those are my pants. And he like, he picked up my pants and I had torn them from the middle Get into the, two pieces. Get the fuck in the, out. And just like the underwear story from earlier. So these, they can get out. Yeah. These pajamas came in a double pack. So we get the other one, same build. And him and I are trying to pull this pajama That's apart. So we cannot. Funny. We cannot pull the pajamas apart. I'm telling you, it's a superpower. I'm telling you, this is a superpower. I Come can, on. If, if somebody was able to, like, Bucky from, like, Captain yeah, yeah, America, yeah. somebody was supposed to, like, yeah. just tell me to, like, hey. April 20th. Yeah. Right now, just, Hammer, like, what are we doing? Dog. Just, like, tail. He just checks yeah. in. I, just I am activated. now the Muslim soldier. Yeah. Well, that sounds scary, too. <laughs> that sounds scary, too. You just wake up, there's heads around. You're like, whose heads are these? Oh, no. Did you say oxtail? Honey, I proclaimed uh, the ISIS caliphate again. I'm so oh, sorry. No. We need to call the RCMP again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Some of the things I can do are kind of complicated, so it's weird. Like, some things I'm like, I don't know how I did that. You know? like so. I, I, Here's, the, here, here's here what we're going to do for the video podcast. We're mm. going to, you're going to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Y- yes and I we're gonna buy something from Ikea just like a like a bookshelf or like a bed or something and right. we're just gonna leave it in the living room and we're gonna see if you can build it because <laughs> that would be incredible if you just we wake up because like, like listen we can let's monetize this all yeah. right? we can make some money off of this I don't even know I wake up 
He's kind of tired. It's like, it's like, it was like in our reviews, right? He'd be like, "Oh, we went into the IKEA installer. He does it by he does it by when he's sleeping. Um, not bad. Uh, we had three dressers. Two of them were built as dressers. One of them was a T Rex. That would be the coolest <laughs> if I could just make something that I'm not even supposed to make. It's so, like Lego. We can make one thing. Yeah. We can make another thing entirely. Yeah. Oh my! Like, see, so oh. uh, made the grand mosque some ta- somehow out of a TV stand. <laughs> Not sure how. That is that would be him. the fu- single funniest. So I when I went for my sleep study because like when I start you know you get married my wife was like you get this looked at when I went for a sleep study they put all these electrodes yeah, yeah hundreds yeah. of wires on me and uh, have a good night's sleep like, yeah <laughs> and I'm like I was sure I was gonna sleepwalk I'm like I am so uncomfortable right right now yeah uh, and I look like a Borg and I'm going to bed. So I turn the lights off. I can see like there's the infrared camera. Yo. this is the uh, there's a night vision camera and a regular camera. I wake up in the morning. I am not sure if I have sleepwalked or not. So, like, I open the door and I ask the lady. And she was like, yeah, you woke up everybody. (laughs) And there's, like, 18 other people that are doing sleep studies. And apparently, and she she said we can't, like, we don't give these to people, but you can look at it. And I, I sat up and I go... (laughs) <laughs> oh, no. and then i just went back to bed oh no like it was like a 30 second top of your lung scream and then just went back to bed and, uh, it's almost like the internal is also yeah. a comedian too it's like you want to see something i'll give you something to look at yeah, dude, <laughs> yo that's amazing. i don't even remember i don't remember any of it I just Jeez. and she was like, yeah, none of nobody else could go to sleep afterwards so it was really hard to do the sleep so she was so pissed that she's like yeah we're gonna have to have everybody back Except like, for you, you're never allowed me back. Because at two thirty, I'm like, wake up, you know, just like, yeah, it sounded like somebody was dying. Good but Lord, this is life. Such is life. We all have stories. I'm gonna start doing more stand up around this stuff because it's fun to talk about. Oh, 100. Yeah, that'd yeah, be a riot. Good. Get me. Let me know about that. The, the I will, show you were listen, talking. I'll about. take you anywhere. I, I run a, a joke writing workshop uh, on Tuesdays. Yeah, I, I have a show. Joke marmalade. Saturday. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Uh, every six thirty to eight uh, at another bar. If you ever want to come out and uh, yeah, well, I'll come out. Jokes. Uh, and then you know my show on Saturdays. I would love you to come out. Tell us where like people can find yeah. you and like what uh, you got going Twitter, on. Instagram, Hisham Kalati, his ham K E L A T I, and then I host. I think what is quite possibly the best comedy show in Toronto. Uh, uh, best of Underground uh, mm. every Saturday at eleven at the Underground Comedy Club on the East End. And that's Saturday. Yes, sir. Eleven p.m. It's All a right. great late night show. Everyone's you know people are a little boozy, but it's a pot pot room, so everyone's just kind of I'll come out uh, uh, a like little high. And uh, I, I I would I'm trust me I'm gonna tape it. I'm gonna send it to you guys. I'm gonna post it up on Crash and Flow uh, on the Facebook page. Nice. Uh, just an adorable clip. Uh, of you doing stand up uh, just because it would be really funny. Oh, uh, I'd love to come out, man. We'll make it happen. Anytime. 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 Anything else you want to plug? Uh, no, I'm just, uh, just add me on Instagram. Uh, come check out any of the shows I post. Uh, feel free to tweet at me too. Uh, yeah, tweet yeah we'll, guy, we'll, yeah. we'll put all I, your links. We'll put oh, all please, your links please, in, please. The, uh, in the description Are of the podcast. Are we coming to an so end? There was so much I wanted to talk about. I had a great time. You know what? We'll do this again. Yeah, we'll do this again. This was super easy. I have a lot about D&D, a lot about Star Trek, a lot about drugs I still want to get into. Okay, okay. Fair, fair. I still have, I didn't do any callbacks to previous episodes. I'm very disappointed. I'm very sorry, guys. I will come back next time. We believe. We believe, though. Oh, it was great. Hey, man, you were right. Oh, buddy, uh, I'm. This was the most fun. Uh, this is fantastic. Thanks for, thanks for being on. I will be texting you guys obnoxiously in awesome. real life now. That's this good. We'll make a no. we'll make a WhatsApp group and uh, please. You can text. Yeah, this is first off. He's a, this guy's lying because if you Facebook message him or text him, he does take three days to get it, back it, to you. That's only because I, I didn't know how much I liked them. Okay, these guys are great, <laughs> fantastic, and I love it because you're like, hey, you know, it's, it's, uh, give me your number and like, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll text you. It's all easier. I'm like, of course. And I've been waiting for a text from him for this entire time. And the first message you get. WhatsApp. Could you be any more of a goddamn immigrant what and use WhatsApp? Want? Come on. Who's not using WhatsApp? Yeah, the text easiest me. way. Come on. It's, it's just the most doing... auntie and uncle thing. It's just I test, I sent you my location. How, I know. how else was, am I supposed to do that? I laughed so hard. <laughs> it's like, I'll be here in three five minutes. I'm like, this is my mom. Like this is the yeah. most perfect thing. I loved it. It was great. No, awesome, man. Yeah, man. We, great we, to have we you like that. We'll do it again soon. Yeah, please, please, definitely. Please. All right, people. Thank you for tuning in the podcast. Thank you for listening. Uh, we'll be back in a week. Take care of yourselves. Good night. Thank you.